Oh, man. Oh, man. He did it again. Dynasty, well, it was already there. Confirmation now. Uh, Chiefs Kingdom, uh, I guess it's true, and we're just living in it. Welcome to a Mokama Beer Company Monday. Uh, Mokama, they definitely can deliver great craft coffee every day of the week. Beautiful craft creations Tuesday through Sunday up there in Fernandina and Wildlight. So that's two Nassau locations and, of course, Mokama Beer on the shelves at Total and ABC will be telling you about them today. But as we get everything cranked, it's the day after the Super Bowl. Some people would like to make this a holiday, but everyone comes out of Sunday night back into their workplace, and we just talk about the game. Uh, And here in Duval, we're definitely going to tie it back to Jacksonville and your Jaguars and what's it going to take. Very simple. What's it going to take? Because the hunger, the excellence – the preparation and the execution, Leon, it is all there when it comes to the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, let me just say when it comes to Pat Mahomes, more than anything else, he is the man. He is the man. He is absolutely the man. Listen, I was privileged when I, in my era to go up against a couple of good dynasties, Cowboy dynasties, Broncos dy- And listen, I equate dynasty back-to-back. Okay. You went back-to-back, that's a dynasty. So I, I, Cowboys dynasty, Broncos dynasty. But the one thing they miss, him there. My son, when he was little, and he used to get in, in the playground fighting, and I said, who did it? Him there. They don't have him there. Him <laughs> there is Patrick Mahomes, that yeah. guy. Woo, I, he man, is Matt, him. Matt just told me. He said, Leon, you're going to have to say you're never going to bet against I'm never. I'm never. I posted it. I post stamped it yesterday. 2 11 I'm never betting against Patrick Mahomes ever again. Wow. When 15 has the ball. It's time left. And I was trying to think to myself, when I play, who is that guy? That if you, you knew that less than two minutes ago, if he has the ball, he has a chance. Elway. Elway's not even close to this guy. And he was in all of Elway's of, greatness. King of the and, comeback. And, and all of Elway's greatness, he was not him there. Yeah. He, I'm gonna, Patrick Mahomes, that guy. He's that guy. It, it's so funny because we, we look around and we say, what is something like that that you would like to be able to get your hands on with this football team? And there is nothing right now. Trevor doesn't represent that. There really isn't anybody else on this team that represents and that. I'm, right I'm another thing they need to stop doing, okay? You know, right in the middle of the season when the Chiefs were kind of struggling, they weren't that dynamic team that we used to think, used to seeing, whatever, and they were trying to say, equate, okay, Barrows is in this. No, Barrows – Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, whoever, is Patrick Mahomes and the rest of the world. There's nobody on his level. There's nobody that's quite like him. I think the thing that gets me when we look at this game is that he was able to – he's the classic I-can-do-more-with-less guy. And this was in a game when even Travis Kelsey was in the doghouse for a little bit uh, for trying to hip-toss his head coach, which was just unbelievable. And he went to Valdez Scantling. He just went down the line and made play after play. And then he used his legs and took off and started to make plays. Travis Kelsey, one catch for one yard in the first half. (laughs) In the second half, eight catches for 92 yards. Yeah. I, um, I, I don't want to ever hear it again about, oh, like there's not enough time at halftime to actually make adjustments. Adjustments were made in this game on both sides. And I'm not just talking about the injury to Dre Greenlaw, which I think directly impacted it was, it was the massive. outcome of this yeah, one. And, and listen, I, I know, I, I don't know. Like I know people were like laughing at it, including people may or may not be in this room. Um, but like I couldn't help but come away from that game feeling like Dre Greenlaw, Fred Warner, Nick Bosa, they were all so amped up, so fired up. That defense came out like its hair was on fire. And by the end of the game, the boogeyman, as you like to call him, Leon Searcy, had every single member of that 49ers team, and they kept panning and they kept taking shots of them on the sideline on the broadcast, of them just looking up at the sky being like, this can't be happening. And it is. They looked gassed. They couldn't believe it was happening. And it happened again. Yeah, I mean, listen, they, they, I mean, have you, you ever seen Hagler Hearns fight? I mean, that fight is like blow for blow, toe for toe for about three Some of rounds. the best. But eventually, Hearns got tired. Yeah. He couldn't, he couldn't stop swinging. But the Chiefs didn't. They, they swung the whole game. And for whatever reason, the Chiefs, from the first half to the second half, they looked like they got tougher. I mean, I know they made halftime adjustments, but in that first half, the 49ers controlled both lines of the line of scrimmage, getting after the passer, running the ball, keeping the ball, controlling the time of possession. The Chiefs going into halftime, it just looked like they got stronger, more equipped, and, you know, just out-executed the 49ers. They still brought their stuff, but the Chiefs just, whatever they brought, they had to I'll tell you what they brought. 
95 guy that gathered the entire defense mm-hmm. on the sidelines and it ends right now. That's what happened. Second yeah, I mean, half, listen. they played. They played. Well, he took over. He did. out on defense. Well, and, and you are right. That- and that's here's the thing, too, is we're talking about, you know, it was a boring game. It wasn't a boring game. It was a great game. It was a defense game. And I think we're so used to up and down the field, up and down the field, ball in the air, big plays that this was boring, but it wasn't boring. It was a well-played defensive game that both defenses were dominating until – until, Until that guy, the greatest guy on the there. planet, needed a drive to either tie the game in regulation yeah. or win the game in overtime, yeah. and he did it. It's so funny because the PSA before the game was, these are two of the top three defenses in the National Football League. Yet, we go into the game and we forget about it because we want to see the fireworks. I'll admit it. I'm an oh man, okay? I like to scream, oh yes, uh, like Tony Romo. And so I'm an offensive guy, and I wanted to see that firepower in San Francisco go against Steve Spagnuolo's defense and, mm-hmm. and obviously make something happen. And then I wanted to see what Mahomes could manufacture. You had defenses that were absolutely putting hat, hat, hat on guys. I mean, they were thumping out there. There were there was some butt walloping going on in the first half of the game and they got after Mahomes. That was the reason I picked the Niners mm-hmm. because they got after him from the well, they jump. Made him, they made him indecisive. He was indecisive early on in the first half because of all the pressure he was getting and the back end of the coverage. The coverage on the linebackers. I mean, the linebackers did an outstanding job on Kelsey. One catch for one yard, Kelsey in the first half. Yeah, come on now, they locked him in. And then the back end, of the, the the DBs had the wide receivers, and then they were getting pressure with four man rush. I mean, they were getting after him. But I do think, but he, you had to know. In the second half, that they were going to figure it out. Yeah, well, then Nagy figured it out and he yes. spread everything out. Yes. Well, I think, spread I think everything out, then all of a sudden, Mahomes, they can't cover. And it's easy to cover the phone booth. When you spread everything out, mm-hmm. it's quicker to hit shots. But, like, honestly, the halftime adjustment, I firmly believe, was Travis Kelsey looked at Andy Reid and said, I'm sorry, man. And that was it. And then he basically said, okay, you're back in. Because they were going away from him. as Because, all right, let's just at least stay with the hip toss. That's some BS from Travis Kelsey on the sideline. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Disrespectful. Yeah. And on the biggest stage and the biggest night, you don't do that to your coach. And the, the the director and Nance and Romo, they just didn't even make a big deal out of this. That's a pretty big deal. You take bad guy doing that, how many times will you see that over? He's and over? done. He's he's done. He's he's getting an Uber to the airport. He's not getting on the bus. <laughs> you know that. You, anybody that didn't have the credentials that Kelsey did now, a second or third string guy, come on, bro. He's yeah. done. It's a wrap. Do you, have you seen a, a professional player yell at his head coach screaming, give me the ball? Like, when was the last time we saw that? Well, I know we have, but not like that. Now, you can go all the way back to Keyshawn, just give me the damn Michael ball. Michael Irvin. Yeah. yeah. It, right. but there, there have been plenty of those guys, and we even saw it with uh, Rasheed Rice. He was Randy complaining Moss, a little bit. Plenty. But usually it doesn't go straight to the head coach. Now, he and uh, Kelsey and Reed had that great moment on the sideline going back to, what was it, the end of the regular season or the beginning of the postseason anyway, where Andy hip-checked him. And he put him back in his place because Kelsey went over there and threw his helmet and all this kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. honestly, that was that was swift motivation right there. Yeah. He knew he wanted, to, he wanted to make a play well, with Taylor. Wait, I'm trying to remember box. what play triggered that. Was that um, – It was Pacheco's, Pacheco's fumble. fumble. Okay. Because Kelsey wasn't on the field. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. And All so right. he basically was like, put me on the field, give me the ball. Which mm. I feel like every time he did do something, made a catch, he was immediately bent. Like, they're probably like, you don't have two plays and you can't block anymore. Like, mm-hmm. he's just not the same anymore. But – Catching wise in the second half, no. man, he was oh, monstrous. Oh, yeah. yeah, he was. All right, so you guys hit us with it. Six four one ten ten. What jumped out at you at the uh, at the game? And and I agree. I love seeing these these mammoth matchups where both sides have good on good, and it's both really good defenses against really gifted offenses. Let's give Brock Purdy some credit. For the most part, he played him a hell of a game uh, against that Steve Spagnola defense and against Chris Jones. Uh, but when it mattered most, uh, they couldn't block Chris Jones. Uh, and that's basically was, was the difference down the end. Now, agree or disagree with the way they played overtime, San Francisco. When you saw it unfold and they decided to take the ball with the new overtime rules, Leon, what, what was I, I didn't have, have a problem with it. Me neither. I absolutely didn't have a problem with it. I mean, I, I, but I knew this, though. If you want to take the ball, you better score a touchdown. Right. Field goal's not going to win it. If you if you don't score a touchdown, if you go down there and kick a field goal, you had to know in your mind that Patrick Mahomes with the ball, yeah. this he's going to go down and score a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, because you got to think, 
in that in that quarter when in in, in that overtime, he he kept the ball, especially on that fourth down and one. Now a lot of people don't with that fourth down and one where he ran his own read and he kept the ball and went outside. A lot of people are not mentioning the fact that Bosa has outside contain on that, up the field outside contain on that play. And didn't get him. And he he went down. Now, don't get me wrong. Now he, he's Johnny Hustle. He's mm-hmm. going to try to get. He's going to try to make a play in the backfield. But your assignment was up the field contain on the wide I mean, on the quarterback. Now they motioned Kelsey. Now the linebacker had, Kel- but his his. Because that's that option. Yes, exactly. You, In other you words, got upfield contain. If now, Bosa no one comes knows. To him, he just tosses. Exactly. I'm saying, but you don't know how he could have obstructed his throw in some capacity if he if he does what he was supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. So, do you go for it on fourth down if you're Kyle Shanahan? That's do you kick, th- Do you kick the field goal? You talking about when you went down fourth and three in overtime? Yeah. In overtime. Yeah, you you got to take. You have point. to. You got to. Yeah, take you kick. It was, it was yeah. third and four. Yeah. Well, not only yeah. that, it's you know why the Chiefs. I, I texted yeah, this to JJ. Text the group. Is, yeah. When that game was, when it was ten three, and they kicked the field goal to make it ten six, that was one of the biggest plays in the game. Take the points, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't try the stupid analytic crap that doesn't work. Yeah. Take the points. And, and I think, and you, the, your point is that you they went down there and they messed it up. Okay, they got in the red zone first, and then. Uh, Pacheco, Paco coughed up the football. And so th- sometimes the coach can press in that You know situation. why else you take the points? Because yeah. you never know when somebody's going to do something dumb. Like the, your 49ers kicker. Like yeah. yeah, a missed extra point. You never know when something like that's going to happen. Just take what you can take. That's why I don't have any problem with what the 49ers did. Kick the field goal. Mm-hmm. You have a very good defense, a you know great defense. Stop them. Get a stop. Would you have taken the ball in overtime? No. 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 And that's yeah. and that's the point I was going to get at. So the way it was broken down for me is by taking the ball first, what Kyle Shanahan basically did was accept that while certainly we won't get the opportunity to punch back if we score a touchdown or a field goal and the Chiefs score whatever we just scored, then it would become sudden death. And then you get the ball. You back. get that extra possession. So yeah. it was a possession over the knowledge of, all right, well, they already scored this much, so we know what we have to do. And so if it's fourth and three and we're down three, we have no choice. If it was fourth and three and we're down a touchdown and we're going to kick a field goal, no, you got to go for it. Mm-hmm. So that that was kind of the weighing of the odds. And I think Kyle Shanahan did a really good job of explaining that post game. Although um, I'm sure you guys saw the, yeah. the, the quotes from Kyle Juszczyk yeah. and a couple <laughs> of the others that they legit – didn't know like they thought well we took the ball first because this is normal overtime rules yeah he explained it well after the game just so happened his players didn't know right the coach knew which is what matters most of all so it's so it's you know it's kind of null and void but it was interesting to me um and and then also not that i want to make this about critiquing the broadcast but let us go around the room jj you said you thought tony romo jim nance were great I didn't think Jim Nance was great. Okay, actually. so Tony, I, I Tony left. Jim Nance Jimmy's... was like, I was like, what the hell, dude? But I thought Tony Romo, you know, people trash him a lot. I thought he was phenomenal last night, and uh, I thought Nance was fine. Specifically, he was fine. Yeah. But there was one point I, there Nance was a lot messed of hiccups, up a name. I feel like, yeah, and, yeah, and. There was a play when they blitzed Mahomes late in the game mm-hmm. before the ball even got out of his hands. He goes, "That's a mistake." And it was. And Rice takes it like a crossing pattern for like 20 yards up the field on like a, a key third down conversion. Yeah, those they are didn't, the things. That's, that's gold, but Jerry. There was they didn't have any kind of simpatico stuff. last night. Yeah. No. I, I think you can – I and not, not only that, the last thing they said to you. Yeah, the, well, the last thing they said is, yeah, I love you. I think this is their last game together. Yeah, they're even sitting further apart like yeah. there's a <laughs> pandemic going on. Yeah, I think there's <laughs> – uh, It was yeah. awesome. Well, like, no, there's no have plexiglass, like a, right? Plexiglass in between Is Jason Kelsey going to be in the number one booth then? I don't know, but the way they signed off sounded to me like two guys that are not going to work well, it was funny anymore. because they went back and nance referred to the producer and how great he's been and all this like and he's he said, leaving yeah he yeah he hired me uh, romo said and all this kind of stuff and you're right you're probably right they're going to take his 17 20 million whatever they it just didn't have him under well contract too, and the, well but they, the whole I, thing was but to his point it was that at the end of the game yes. He didn't really ex- – they didn't really explain no, that the not. quarter that is true. can end. First, it's like the, it's like the quarters, Jim. It's like the second That's quarter. The, it's yes. going to continue. For those of you who are wondering, so, oh, oh, and they just scored. Oh, like, and they won. At first, I'm like, all right, the two-minute warning didn't happen. So I'm like, That's different. And then the clock keeps running. I'm like, they still have a couple timeouts. They could use all these. I don't understand what's going on. And then with like 20 seconds left, finally Romo goes, hey, by the way, 
the clock can't really run out. We'll just start another quarter. So right. They're not and up so, against it here. I'm well, like, they, dude, well, the, please well, the tell ref, us that before. Yeah. But the ref did say, and they they said it too, we're, we're start, starting another okay, game. Okay, but yeah. that's mm-hmm. also not what happened. Because if we're starting another game in a quarter, then the Chiefs scoring at the end would not have ended it. Then they would have still had like time left. Right. It, it's so still, they it's, really didn't explain it I'll well. put it to you this way. It's like in golf, whenever you have, like say at the players, you have the gauntlet which is 16, 17, and 18, and they will play all three with an aggregate score. For the playoff. If you are t- in a playoff, if you are tied, then it becomes sudden death. And so, yes, the rules are explained clearly. And in this case, both teams possess the ball. Second team possession has to match first team possession or game over. And then, obviously, the clock will keep going. And, the, and I didn't expect a two-minute warning because I considered it a quarter. that it was. Well, I also blame the CBS yeah. people. You guys should have had a graphic. You are. You Right about Immediately that. Immediately had a graphic so everybody can yeah. read it. We're all yeah. visual people. You and read just it. Just a no. reminder like 15 minutes ago, maybe the ref told us the rules, but a lot's happened since then. And I see the clock ticking, and yeah. I've had like 10 drinks. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's yeah. like, please. Why are we doing this? Like, we? Why is it counting down? Why are they being so and, nonchalant and see, about this? See, man, hey, you wanted all this confusion. You wanted somebody else to get the possession. You didn't want nobody to have to go home and cry. So this is why we have these problems right now because What's of you. What's the problem? Because the, the Bills uh, cried about it. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. I don't understand what yeah. the problem is. The what pro- was the problem with overtime? Huh? The what problem was, the was the problem? some things need to be left alone. Leon originally like, two I don't know what years the, but ago. I know, but I don't know what the problem was with this overtime. So you, you like wanted it just overtime? to be sudden death, game over. What is this, this extra position, possession stuff? I don't like it. I just, oh, I love it. You so think you think the Niners real. drive down, kick the field goal, game over? Game over. Yeah. No, I love I'll it. I'll be Both looking teams, pretty right now. Because I, I hate the idea. Well, well, that wasn't <laughs> the rule. It's if you would have scored a touchdown, then it would have been yeah, game like over. Yeah, the Chiefs well, would have okay. still gotten the possession. Yeah. So now yeah. they guarantee both teams touch the ball. Mm-hmm. So we'll make it a, uh, an ex-poll today, JJ, and at least ask, you know, mm-hmm. you like the new overtime rule or you would, you know, old school it, uh, stay in your era, Cersei, uh, and go back to uh, whoever wins the coin toss has <laughs> got the best chance to win. All right, you can do it. Uh, Mokama Beer Company Monday. Don't forget Mokama.com. You can log on and see all the great craft creations that they've got Tuesday through Sunday. You can find yourself on a bar stool in their beautiful tap room, South 8th Street in Fernandina, and then also their satellite location in Wildlight. So definitely check them out. And you can find them at Iceman Games and a bunch of other places. But make sure you check out Mokama. All right, so the overtime, that's the number one thing. We'll create the X poll. You guys tell us whether you, you know, love it or not. Now let's just at least set up a little conversation going into the next seg uh, as to – You know, we've done it a thousand different ways. What do they got that we don't got referring to Duval? But the thing that gets me more than anything else, and Leon, I I, I don't know. It's not quantifiable. It's not something you can buy off the rack or order off of Amazon. But the passion, the drive, the dedication, it is real with the Kansas City Chiefs. And I don't know how you get that DNA in Duval. How, How do you? How do you? Well, first of all, you've got to experience more than one time. You've mm-hmm. got to be consistently in the playoffs to get that game time experience so you know how to deal when it went. The Chiefs, are who they are, is because they've been to six straight AFC championship games. They understand the clutch genes. They have the clutch gene, and they have leadership within that locker room that's been in those tight games and know how to respond to and react to it accordingly. Listen, I'm sure when they came in that locker room at halftime or whatever, might have been some cussing, might have been some fussing, but it was some guys, <laughs> and it was definitely some cussing and fussing going on. But you got guys, you got leadership in that locker room <clears throat> that can say, okay, listen, let's get back to basics. Let's get back to what we do best. Let's get after them and, go, and let's go win it. When you have that in your locker room, that, you can only get that through experience. You can't get that being one and done in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You can't get that showing up at the playoffs every five years. You got to be consistently a playoff team to get that kind of aura about you. So when you get in those type of games, you know how to respond to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you saw it yeah. from so many guys. And Mahomes is the maestro, the magician, the orchestrator of all things. And then Andy Reid, mm-hmm. who looks like he's checking and you know in, in all you can eat buffet in, in you know back in Kansas City. I mean, the guy looks so nonchalant. He does not look like he's putting pressure on anybody. Yet he has. A clean, organized plan uh, um, and on a, both sides of the bro, ball. Oh, he has a machine. Yeah. He, he doesn't even need – listen, Andy is who he is, all right? But he has – like I keep saying, he's got guys in that locker room that run that thing like a tight ship. Yeah. They're not going to allow anybody to come in, whether it be rookie or free agent, to come and mantle the boat. 
there ain't gonna be no mutinies on there. So you either right the ship, yeah. or you jump off. So I heard a conversation that Trevor Lawrence had with Steve Smith, uh, NFL Network, yeah. Radio Row, whatever it was. He was out there with Gatorade, which is one of his big sponsors. Shout out to Gatorade, and and. He said, you know, we didn't end the way we wanted to, you know, this and that. We've got to get back and, and, and remain hungry. I just want to see that hunger, that fight. And I'm not like dinging Trevor and saying he's the cause of this. But that leadership quality that Mahomes has is what you want in your quarterback. You can't help but want that. The question is, is can you get that from 16? And look, it's a maturation process. Even if you get it from 16, he's still got to go. Still There's so go, many other things. No, he's still got to go through 15. Yeah, well, yeah. And yeah, true. he himself is not going to be going against Patrick Mahomes, but that's the reality. There are 31 other teams that woke up around the National Football League this morning, especially those, what is it, 15, 16? I, I can't do math. 16, mm-hmm. the other 15 in the AFC, and realized they still have to deal with this right. guy. He ain't going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. Josh Allen and the Bills but, yeah. have, statistically speaking, I saw the graph floating around since 20. 2020 have put up one of the most prolific offensive numbers and efficiencies and plus minus whatever you want to go through and they've never gotten past patrick mahomes well so even uh, if you get the dog sorry leon but even if you get the dog and trevor Mm -hmm. even if this all comes together can you get past them only one only one guy not named tom brady has and that's joe burrow and the Bengals. and it took overtime and it took you know everything kind of falling their way Mm mm-hmm that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, but if, if you're a player, you want to be great, you want to see Mahomes. That's mm-hmm. the only way. You, in order to be the man, you got to beat the man. You, you don't run from him. Run at him. That's greatness. What you saw your ass, that's greatness. If this team or this organization or this player, Trevor Lawrence, if he wants to be in the uh, in the whispers yeah. of a guy like Patrick Mahomes, you should want to see him every year. Head to head. Head to head. All right. 